I am painting a Iron Warriors Chaos Space Marine, and I'm painting him in a specific, uh, using a specific technique, which I learned from a friend of mine. Um, I've never tried it before, and he told me about it, but I don't think he's tried it before either. So we're going to see how it goes today. Um, I primed this guy Zenithal, uh, as you can see, normal, sprayed him all black, then I sprayed him from above with Wraithbone, I think, or maybe Gracier, probably Gracier. And then I sprayed him from underneath with a Rust-Oleum Red Primer. So he's got three colors on him. And so as you can see from this direction, he sort of looks shaded like a normal Zenithal. From up here, he looks pretty white. And then from here, he looks red. So the idea is we're going to paint him up using some transparent paints, probably contrast paints for most of it, and then stick him on a lava base. And hypothetically, that red under there will give us a nice glow effect from the lava. We're going to see. Uh, the only other thing I did to him is right here on the chain sword. You can see I scored some lines so I can do the trademark hazard stripes of the Iron Warriors on the blade of the chain sword. Alrighty, other than that, I'm going to get started. I'm going to start with Basilicum Gray for the armor. Um, Normally, Iron Warrior's armor is silver, um, but we are, because of the red that we put underneath, we need that to stick around. So we're going to do sort of a combo paint job of contrast paint underneath and then highlighting with legitimate colors or layer paints uh, in the colors that we actually need. So we're gonna put Basilicum Gray down for all the armor panels. This is gonna be our quote unquote silver. So I'm just gonna put that everywhere on the armor panels. And hopefully these contrast colors will allow the red to still shine through and we'll get a nice effect out of this. If not, then we'll just have a contrast space marine and you know, that's fine. But I'm hoping that this will give us a, a nice light source from the base. All right. These shoulder pads will actually end up being black, but I'm just going to cover them up right now. Get all this. And make sure I get the helmet. These guys have a lot of trim on them. And the trim is going to be gold, so. But we'll come back and do that afterward. And like I said, because we don't want to cover up the, the red Zenithal we did, we're going to have to do the gold in a transparent yellow, and then we're going to highlight the tops of the yellow with our actual gold color so that it's gold from above, but if you look underneath, you'll still have the red showing through. At least that's the plan anyway. We'll see if it actually works out. All right, so I'm just going to cover the legs. All this armor back here. And I've never done anything like this before uh, with either the red glowing zenithal underneath or highlighting the tops of contrast sections with normal paint. So we're going to see how this works. I'm experimenting two times over with this color scheme. So we're either going to get something really cool or we're going to get hot garbage. I'm hoping for something really cool, but I will be okay if we end up with hot garbage. Not the end of the world. Alrighty, almost done with this Basilicum Gray, just getting it on the last leg. And I'm putting this on pretty thin because again we want the red to stay showing through. sure we get all the armor panels covered and 
Okay, I think that's everything. Nope, just kidding. We got to do the back of his head here. And this panel back here. And then we also have to get his backpack. His shoulder pad is going to be black, so I'm not going to not going to worry about that shoulder pad. But I do want to get the backpack. Get in there, up here. We'll do the skulls a different color. I like how you did the basing first. Um, thanks. 10 out of 10 base. Nice, uh, a nice solid white. I did actually do the base first, uh, which is why your sentences confused me for a minute. Because I did do the basic first, but it's off camera drying. <laughs> so I was like, wait, how, do, how does he know I did the basic first? But I think you're making fun of my not painted dirt. Which, you know, fair enough. All right, so that's the armor done. And yes, we can still see the red. That's good. We still have the red going. So then we are going to... I think we're going to go straight into the highlight of that red or of that of that red of that uh of the armor there so because we're painting an iron warrior it's only fair that we use iron warriors to highlight it and so we're doing this so as we saw we still have our red glow underneath we want to keep that so all these panels that we just did in this color we're going to only do the top so for instance these panels here we still have red glowing down here, so we're going to do the tops in silver. Just like this, and like this, and just sort of, you don't have to be too precious about fading it down, just, just paint up near the top, and then not as much near the bottom. So we're just going to do this with all our panels. So for instance here, just going to do that area, that area. the top here of this knee pad um, some of these areas like this area didn't get a lot of the zenithal on it just because of the nature of trying to spray around the stick and the base and everything this obviously could be done better if you planned super far ahead and or not even super far ahead just planned ahead in general and didn't prime your miniature two hours before your stream but for today this will work just fine so just gonna cover up more parts up here and up here and then back here again just the tops of each panel here some of them like I said don't have much red on them so they can be almost completely covered which is fine all right, so then we're going to do the top of these panels over here. Excellent. All righty. All right, so there's that. So we have our, our silver put in there. So our armor actually is the color we want. But if we check underneath, we still have the red glow. This is good. The second we lose the red glow, then this, this episode's all over. We've ruined the purpose of this episode. Um... So now I'm going to go on to the gold. And so what I'm going to do for that is I'm first going to take some Grey Knight Steel. And I'm going to highlight exactly like we just did with the Iron Warriors. I'm going to do that with the Grey Knight Steel on all the trim. So just the tops, leaving the red glow. So let's give it a whirl here. So we're going to start up here. Like this. And down here like this. And then here. This guy has a lot of trim on him, so we just want to be careful to not cover up that nice red glow that we got for ourselves. Um, all right, the shoulder pad. Put the silver here. 
and then just a little bit down here. Okay. And then get some here. Get some more trim here. Some more trim here. Like I said, this guy is. These new cast space frames are chock full of the trim. Between their, their release, whenever the old Space Marine kits came out, I don't know, 14 decades ago or so, and now they spend all their time in the warp trimming their armor. That's a reference to a, uh, to a game that I enjoyed as a child and still enjoy to this day. If you know what game I'm talking about, shout it out in the comments. I'll be very happy. Me and my mother still play to this day. It's tons of fun. I encourage you all to give it another whirl. I'm sure you played it as a child. It's totally worth it. Alright, so then just the top of this trim, just lightly right there. Because there's a lot of red glow there. This trim here. I'm telling you, so much trim on this guy. And I'm just, in some places, I'm making it a little patchy, the silver, because I don't want it to be, don't want to be 100% perfect, because they are Chaos Space Marines, after all. And then I'm going to do this shoulder pad here. And some silver up here on this spike and then I'm gonna do the details of the of the skull alrighty that looks about good maybe I'll do this skull here also actually all right that looks about good for that. So now I'm going to go in and, well, I'll let that dry for a little while. Uh, while that dries, I'm going to use, I'm going to do the leather. Um, am I? Nope, I lied. I'm going to do the black parts. So for this, I'm going to use black Templar. This is going to be the two shoulder pads and the hazards, half the hazard stripes on his sword. So we'll do this shoulder pad first. This is really going to cut the glow, but that's okay. Because you would not necessarily expect to see any glowing light on a black surface like this. We are going to try to drag it off just a little bit so that you can see some of the red. This black Templar is very opaque. So there's the shoulder pad, so I'm just going to get my brush, clean it off, and then I'm just going to come in here and drag some of the paint off. Just so there's, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but let's drag it up there. Just so there is the tiniest hint of a red glow on that black part there. So then I'm going to do the same thing, make this other shoulder pad black. There's not a lot of it sticking out behind the skull, but there is some. That'll work. Then do the same thing, rinse off my brush, and just pull some of this Black Templar back off. Just so there is some glow there. And got a little bit on the skull, just to get that. All right, back off. All right, and then we're gonna do the hazard stripes. I'm not concerned if there's glow on the hazard stripes or up on the chainsaw because it's so high up. Um, and like I said in the beginning of the stream, I scored these before the stream with an exacto, so I didn't have to try and freehand these things. So I'm just gonna go in and paint along the score lines. Score lines make it infinitely easier to paint hazard stripes, as you can see. 
Uh, what did I start with? The bottom one? Yeah, the bottom one. You gotta make sure your hazard stripes line up. So I'm just gonna do the other side. And we're going to come back and paint the sword itself silver, so that's not a problem. And then I'm just going to do the backs of the stripes here. Also scored with the X-Acto to make it easy. And just get that last bit. All right, so there's half our, our hazard stripes done. Come back and do the yellow. I think that's all the black that will be on him. So I'm just gonna touch my silver here, see if it's completely dry. It is, perfect. So now we're gonna go to the gold part. So for this, I'm going to take, yeah, I think I'm just gonna use the straight yellow. I'm gonna use E and in yellow, and I'm gonna go over every part that is the trim and that we painted Grey Knight Steel. Uh, both the trim that is not painted with silver and the trim that is painted with silver. And hopefully, we'll get a nice gold trim look out of this. So here we go. It might look a little janky at first. Um, once it dries, though, it should improve the look. But we'll see. If it comes out too orange, we can always go back and solve that problem later. So I'm just going to do this on all the trim just being careful not to get any on the main armor color here oh, I should have done the uh, the armor joints in black at the same time as I was doing the other stuff but that's okay So just going to get all the trim, being very careful not to touch the underlying armor color like I did right there. Thankfully, contrast paint will pull back up no problem. Just work our way all the way around the trim. Basically, you just want to not miss a spot with this. You want to be really diligent and make sure you don't leave a Grey Knight Steel spot as Grey Knight Steel because it will stick out like a sore thumb. Of course, now that I say that, I probably will do it. But here's hoping I don't. So I'm going to do this, this whole skull and shoulder pad here. This, because the details are so recessed, on this shoulder pad, you really want to be careful that you don't end up with an orange shoulder pad. Uh, you really want this to read as gold, so just want to any any puddles of the contrast paint. You want to pull them up immediately, like right in here. It's a little too orange. Just put some water in there. That's what I like to do. And then dry your brush off and then go back in and pick it up. There we go. That killed some of the orange. It also will look more orange because of our red glow that we still have going on there. So I have to keep that in mind also. So then what do we have here? We have armor trim up here. Yeah, we do. Armor trim right there and right here. And then we have armor trim on the face. So we get that. And then on this arm right here. Try to keep it on camera. A constant problem for me. Alrighty. And then we'll do the shoulder pad. Mm, 
Okay. All right. Uh, just, just the backpack trim left. Oh, no. Back of the legs. Never too much trim. Apparently. Doesn't appear to be any trim on that. Okay. This leg. Oh, I can see my base drying. There's crackle paint on the base for him, so I'm trying to to will it to dry before the end of this stream so I can end by putting him on it. We'll see though. Might have to be a post stream reveal for that one. All right, and then just these skeleton bits up here. Good. And the other one. All right, good. So there's his gold trim all trimmed out. As you can see, it as it dries, it definitely starts to read more gold than yellow or orange. So that's excellent. So now, oh, actually, while I'm here, I will do the other sides of the hazard stripes. So I'm just going to fill in the non-black areas with this color. And because we didn't paint any silver up here, these should read more yellow than the gold. At least that's the hope. We might need to punch them up with some layer paint highlights. We'll see about that later. Again, contrast paint makes hazard strips easy. If you get a little bit of this yellow on the black, it doesn't matter because you can't tell. All right, so there's our hazard strip. Oh, literally orange right there. That's better. There's our hazard stripe sword done. Just going to put a little more up there. That'll do. All right. So just double check, we still have the red glow. This is good, this is good. That's what we want. So then I think I will go, hmm, I think I'll do the leather now. Uh, his holster and his belts and stuff. I'm gonna do that in my favorite contrast leather color, assuming I can find it, which is snake bite leather. Here it is, snake bite leather. I love hazard stripes. They are cool. They are quite cool. They're quite a pain in the butt, usually. They let everyone know what country you're from. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Wait, those would be hazard stripes with two Zs. Yes, correct. You got it. All right. Get all the leather in here. I'm going to do his his front tunic thing in the leather also. Loincloth, whatever it is. Tabard. I have no idea. Oh, county. County, not country. County. Gotcha. I should learn to read one day. I hear it's fundamental. I'm just putting this on this cloth here. Not being too careful because this stuff's going to be metallic, so we'll come back and fix it up. That looks good. We'll do the back. That's part of the leather right there. And then we've got these pouches on the side. And then there 
we go. All right, I think that's all the leather on him. Looks to be. I think that's definitely a loincloth. Excellent. All right, then I'm going to take some... I think I'm going to just take some regular silver iron breaker in this case and do some more of the details on him. So I'm going to do these cross chest things here. These things here. Not being too worried about coverage because again if the red glow sticks around a little bit that's great. Still got our red glow. Yep, still there. Every time I turn the model, I'm afraid he's gonna it's gonna be gone. But it's stuck around so far. So I'm just gonna cover the knife in this silver. Get the chains in this silver. And this thing down here. All right. Um, we're gonna leave the grenade. We will do the teeth of the chainsword in this color. And this back tooth thing, this little dot. Uh, yeah, we'll do these down here. This. And this stuff. At this point, I'm just kind of randomly selecting some stuff to be silver. I'm super worried about it. I'll do this thing in silver. Part of his breathing apparatus, I suppose. These things back here can be silver. Alright, and then the front of the teeth. And then the rest of this guard here. Either guard or some brass knuckles for the marine. I feel like it could be both pretty successfully. Uh, oh, and then I'm going to do these side bits in silver but leaving some of the red still. Same with these up here. Leaving some of the red. Good. And then I'm going to do this in silver. This skull here. Alright. That'll be that for the silver. I'm going to now do the skeleton horde. Skeleton horde? I'm going to do that on the skeleton heads. I know. Shocking. I'm also going to do it on the horns on his head. So those look like they could be made of bone. Potentially, anyway. Make sure you get it in the, the details there. And this skeleton horde will keep the red glow quite nicely. Ooh, paint closed. Yep, bright things on the top, always a good idea. So that you can get away with screwing up on the waist down. Not have to, not have to fix it. Maybe not the most healthy attitude, but, you know, whatever. Uh, we got some horns up here. They can be this color. If they've got a little black on them, it's not a big deal. Maybe they're singed. Maybe they're just darker. Whatever. Same thing with these horns. Good. Again, if some are a little darker, maybe they're singed. Maybe they're Darker horns, not a big deal. All right, um, I'm gonna go back with the black now. Uh, the black contrast, that is. Where is it? Here it is, black Templar. And I'm gonna pretty much black out the rest of him that hasn't already had paint touch it. So let's see. Do the handle of the dagger right here. Looks good. Um, we're gonna do, uh, yeah. 
mm, deciding, yeah, I'm going to do the barrel, or the, the barrel, the, the body of the chain sword in black. I was thinking about maybe not, but I am. I just want to make sure I don't ruin my hazard stripes here. So I'm being very careful I'm going, when I'm going down the side of this. That'll work. Okay. And the rest of the parts up here. Leave a little bit of that red still. Flip them over. How come all the Chaos Marines, except 1000 Suns, look like they don't care about getting grimy? Wouldn't some of them get all vain AF and go crazy detailing their gear and looking pretty? Uh, yeah, probably. That's probably why all this trim is here. It might just be that, uh, there are no, there are no, no command structure around deployment limits, so they don't get to go back to the battle barge as often as loyalist marines to clean their armor even as much as they might like to their deployment time means that their armor gets dirtier I would imagine the Chaos Space Marines don't have an HR department you could really like bring grievances to or anything so if your armor gets too dirty you just gotta suck it up or Deal with a demon prince, I guess. Yeah, 10,000 years is a long deployment. Alright, then we're going to do the bolter. Just going to completely black out the bolter. being lighter on the bottom so that the red sticks around okay that looks good Going to do then the same thing we did on the shoulder pads and rinse the brush off. For some reason, I really like the spike on the chainsword a lot. <laughs> the, this back spike here, it's like for if you, if you run out of juice, I guess, spin it around, hit him with the spike. All right, so I'm just pulling some of this off so the red. Uh, Red can stick around a little bit. Alrighty. Then, I'm going to do a couple more details here. Um, I'm going to take some Talisar Blue. And I'm going to do his eyeballs in this color. Being very careful to not hit the gold. go there's his eyes they're not incredibly blue but they are slightly blue tinted that's really all we want maybe I'll make them a little bluer there we go and just a little bit of glow on them on the gold above them just so they stand out a little bit more that's fine and then oh I'm gonna go back with the black and I'm gonna do the Armor joints, like I've said before, neon blue. We might do a uh, we might do a lighter dot in there in a bit, depending on how it looks. So I'm just going to do the armor joints in black. Spin it 
spin them around, get these back here. Thought I knocked my paint over, but it just closed. That's fine. Got these up here. All right. So there's that. And all right. So now we're going to do. What are we gonna do? So in my head right now, he's looking a bit, a little bit, a bit. He's looking a little bit samey. He doesn't have, there's not a lot of contrast on him, which may just be how Iron Warriors are, which is fine. But because of that, I need to I need to do something to change that a little bit. So first I'm going to do this grenade, because honestly the grenade might help. So I'm going to do this in Plague Bearer Flesh. Just to get a little bit of color on him. I'm also, I think, going to highlight the gold with an actual gold. So I'm going to do that. And just like that. All right, so that did not help enough. That's fine. I am going to highlight the gold in an actual gold. I'm going to use Retributor Armor, the go-to gold. And I think this will help quite a bit. Blood Angel Summit on the spike? Possibly. I had my had I had an idea for that, but I haven't, haven't decided if I'm going to go with my idea yet. We might do a Blood Angel, though. If I decide my idea isn't going to pan out. Okay. So I just painted that middle bit gold there. And then I'm just going to do some gold on the upper edges of this yellow. Up there, here, here. Oh, I definitely need to put some red on this Eye of Horus down here. That definitely needs to happen. Some on this side. Some up here. Just like down the middle, I think. Just like that. And then up here. And on this there. And then along there, along there. Other leg. I think that will do. All right. Yeah, I think that is helping quite a bit make the gold stand out some more. Um, I think... Alright, I'm going to put some red on him. Do the Eye of Horus. And then I think... I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that. I'll think about it. So there's the Eye of Horus, getting red. We don't want too much red because we have the red glow. Um, all right, so now I think what I'm gonna do, I think one of the problems is, is that there might be, even though I said there's not enough contrast, what it might be is that there's too much contrast, not in color, but between the shininess and the flatness. So I'm going to put some Basilicum Gray on this on the silver parts here. Just to dirty it up a little bit. And then I'll worry about the color contrast. <laughs> that would be cool to paint all and paint Necrons as... Horus crons and paint all the orbs as the Eye of Horus. That would be quite cool. Canonical? No. Cool? Yes. Just going to put some in there. going to put a little bit in the eyes here. Ooh, too much. <laughs> and then a little bit around there. All right. I think I'm going to put some actual layer paint in the eyes also. So I'm going to use Teclas Blue for that. 
Yeah, that's true. You could always do it on a just a leftover character. That wouldn't be a big deal. All right, so we're going to get real close here and bring the light over so we can actually see. And I'm just going to do a little swoop in the middle of his eye there. And then go and do the same thing in the other guy's eye. Just like that. That brought, brought, brings his eyes out just a little bit. It's all about bringing the eyes out. How's this base doing over here? Just going to check on the base real quick. Oh, it's drying. It's drying slowly. We'll see. All right. So then I guess we'll move on to this helmet up here. And I think where is... All right. Where? I could have lost the color I need. That's okay. We'll use instead of that. Maybe? No. That's blood for the blood god. That certainly isn't going to help. I mean, it might. Just not right this second. All right. This color's seriously gone. Okay. Well, I can't find the exact color I want. So instead, I think we will go with... Hmm. Okay. We'll go with, we'll go with a blood angel head. Why not? So we'll go with Blood Angels Red. Oof, work. Good grief, man. So we're just going to coat the whole helmet in this color. We'll come back and do some quick detailing on him after that. And then hopefully our base will be dry. We might need to punch up the red glow just a little bit also. We're going to have to take a look at that. Just gonna get this whole helmet covered in red. All right, there's that. There's that done. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple little highlights here and there with Wraithbone, not on the marine helmet, but just on the model in general. So I'm just gonna do this little chaos symbol in that color. All right. And on the other side, the same thing. Good enough. And then just a couple highlights on the skeletons here. Just on these side sides of the eyes, I think. Just to make them look a little strange looking. And then see I'm gonna do it right here on the armor on this little circle here and then on the blade of the sword or dagger rather just bow right there and where else I'm gonna try to put a tiny dot of it in each eyeball Let's see if I mess this up Like that. And like that. Excellent. Okay. All right. I'm just going to take a look at him now. I think he's pretty okay. I think we need to punch up the red glow, though. We lost, a l I think, just a little bit too much of the red glow. 
So for that, I'm going to use, I'm going to mix a little bit, a couple paints here. So I'm going to use some Reikland Flesh Shade Gloss along with some of this Blood Angels Red that we just got done with. So I'm going to use more Reikland Flesh Shade to Blood Angel Red. I'm just going to get some of this on the palette. Mix it around there. Did about four drops of that stuff, so I'm going to do about one drop of the Blood Angel Red. Mix it around so it's going to be very, very thin. Maybe even a drop of water in there. So it's even thinner. Rinse off the brush. And then I'm going to come in and just over the spots that we have this red glow, I'm just going to paint some of the red glow in just a little bit more. Just like, oh, sorry, it should be on camera. Just like this. Maybe under here, like this. A little bit in here. And in here. Down on the bottom of that. The bottom of this horn. I think it's a little too much there, so I'll pull it back off just a little bit. And then on the bottom of these f legs down here. I think we'll do it down there, down here, bottom of this backpack. Again, just a little bit too much. Pull it back down, same with the legs, pull it back down, do some under here, and do a little bit more down here. All right, so I think now we've got our red glow preserved properly. And I think, I think we'll be done with the marine. Oh, I gotta, gotta just do a couple touch-ups on the, the marine helmet. So for that, we'll use Wild Rider Red. We're just gonna do a quick edge highlight on the Blood Angel helmet here. Go across there, along here. like that down the back of his helmet like this okay and just a tiny bit more there and there all right so then I'm going to, I'm going to call the Marine itself done. And I'll check out his base. So here's the base I did earlier. As you can see, there's some, some crack texture here with some lava showing through. Um, I'm going to paint this texture though. I'm going to paint it black. So for that, I'm going to use Corvus Black. And just very carefully, I'm going to go in and paint as many of these cracked pieces as I can. Just being careful not to touch the lava itself. And already I have a better way to do this, I just realized. So I'm gonna stop painting them individually like this. I'm gonna get my makeup brush out. I'm gonna get the big old makeup brush. I'm gonna get some on it, get some of this Corvus Black on it. And I'll wipe 99% of it off. Maybe maybe 90% of it off. It's okay in this case if there's a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna go back and forth over the base like this. Until we get the colors we're looking for. Going back and forth. And it's going to be a lot of back and forth 
to get the colors we want, but we want to be very gentle at the same time because we do not want to pull up our chips. I'm just going to get some more paint on this here, and I'm just going to dab in the middle. All right. So I think that's pretty good. Just going back over it. All right, so then we're going to touch up again with the small brush just to cover up these biggest chunks in the middle here. Not really being particular in which ones I cover and which ones I don't. Just sort of covering the ones in the middle. So there we go. That, I think, is a suitable lava base for this clown over here. He's got, he's got some glow to him, which is good. So I'm going to pop him off this base. Hopefully easily. We're going to see. Should involve just... Getting the exacto blade in behind his. Here, I'll do it on camera. That way you guys can see if I mess it up. Just getting the exacto blade behind the foot like that. Yep. And slides right through. Then do the same thing for this one. Exacto blade behind. And slide right through. Perfect. Chuck that base out of there. Grab some super glue. My new favorite super glue. Zappa Gap Medium. Just going to put a little bit of this on each foot. And then pick a suitable spot. I think here looks good. Push him down so he glues. Wait, I don't know, 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That sounds good. And there you go. And that, maybe with a little bit of base rim touch up, is our marine with just a slight glow underneath. I think this red glow probably could be improved. I think if I used lighter colors, it would also look better, but I thought it would come out cool and I wanted to paint hazard stripes. So but yeah, so we've got a little bit of a red glow going on there of some lava, but yeah, that's him done. Um, so that'll be it for this episode. Thank you everybody for watching. Um, next week on Monday, starting on next Monday and every Monday going forward, uh, the stream will be moving from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, this just works a little bit better in my schedule and my daughter's schedule so we can do her online school and my school and all that. So the Monday stream from here on out will be moving from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, it's going to be called Straight from the Pot After Dark instead of just normal Straight from the Pot. Wednesday and Friday will remain the same as always, though. Wednesday, we'll be on the main Galactic channel doing something for beginners um, and more general painting related. Friday, we'll be back on this channel uh, doing 40K or Age of Sigmar, Warhammer related. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will see you next time.